Hello, everyone. You hear me? Yeah. OK, thank you, everyone, for coming for the session about load balancing as a service. Uh, what we'll do today is we'll talk about uh, brief history, what's going to be delivered or what's delivered in Kilo, what's going to be in Liberty, and the next uh, imp uh, reference implementation that is going to be based on the Octavia project. So I am Samuel, and the space bar will switch to the next slide. Okay. Okay. So um, this has been a journey. Uh, we've started on the, I think, on the Folsom version uh, with uh, planning V1. A lot of people were involved. Um, I do apologize if we forgot someone. Um, and we are now approaching um, to be the V2 version. Again, uh, for a brief uh, review of what a load balancer does and what it's important to the cloud. So when we are looking at load balancing functionality, uh, we are looking on three key things. First one is what we are calling local scale out. Um, basically, be able to take a, um, a set of uh, physical machines or VMs and put them behind a, a virtual IP so that you can scale them out or scale them in. Obviously, address failover. So if one of the machine fails, Again, uh, be able to recover that in a seamless way. And the last thing is geographically load balancing, um, which is something that is not touched in Elbas, but obviously this may be one of the key features that we'll be looking and delivering in the future. So again, that's very basic on load balancing as a function in uh, application delivery environments. So what was done in Elbas V1? So Airbus One was a kind of basic. It allows uh, an IP with a specific TCP port uh, to be specified as a front and could either be load balancing HTTP, HTTPS, or simple TCP as a path-through te technology. Um, for example, there was no HTTPS termination. Um, there was persistency uh, based on cookie and uh, source IPs and cookie insertion. Um, the nice thing about Elbas V1 is that it was actually, um, sorry, it, it was a good demonstration on how when specifying an API, you can get a lot of adoption by multiple vendors and multiple solutions. Um, there are, I believe, around 10 different uh, backend implementation for V1. Um, so in that regard, it was very successful. And about let's say about two years ago uh, when V1 uh, was done, we started to hear requests for adding initial capabilities. The key use cases that were not addressed in V1 were uh, we actually want to put more than a single TCP port behind an IP. Seems reasonable, wasn't there at V1. Um, and the other one was uh, we actually uh, want to do a TLS termination because there's a lot of smartness in looking at the content and doing load balancing, and you can't really do that if you don't do termination. And also there is a notion of managing your keys in a, maybe a, a slightly more efficient way. The result was the, what we are calling the V2 model. On the left, you would see the V1. So on V1, we had what was called a VIP. Um, a VIP already includes a single TCP port. Behind the VIP, there was a single pool with a health monitor, which is the health check, the way you uh, check how your servers are alive. And obviously, if they are not, you, the load balancer will stop distributing traffic to them. And the members. V2 did something interesting. It first created what is called a load balancer object, which defines the uh, IP, the virtual IP. It then adds listeners, which adds the a TCP ports that are being listened to. And then behind that, a, a very similar structure, which is the pool, the health monitor, and the members. Um, the interesting addition in addi besides that is that we are actually looking on uh, doing a object sharing, which we, Brandon will talk later. And this also introduced the notion of a slightly different status object, where at the beginning, all objects um, or uh, objects like uh, VIP and pool had their own status. And on V2, the status is actually something that you pull from the load balancer object 
and then you can uh, see what's the uh, hierarchical status of uh, items inside it. This will be um, helping us to uh, introduce sharing, uh, probably at uh, li uh, Liberty. So with the previous slide, we've seen that the model was changed to address uh, one IP, multiple TCP port. The other addition that we are doing for V2 is TLS termination. There were two things that we've decided to be able to do in TLS termination. One is default policy, which means obviously simple termination when you have a single TCP IP. And the guy here nodding is to blame for the other part, which is the SNI support. Um, in short, SNI is when you actually want to do virtual hosting behind the load balancer. So all your virtual hosts are the same IP, but have different SSL certificates. And the certificate delivery is based on the host name. So uh, SNI is also part of uh, V2 TLS. Um, the other thing that was kind of a blocker to introduce it previously was that um, the Neutron uh, team was not uh, willing due to security reason to actually allow storing the certificate in the Neutron database. So a key requirement was to have a secret store, which is now uh, called the Barbican project, which obviously does more than just uh, securing uh, TLS certificates for Elbus, um, but it does store the TLS uh, certificates for Elbus. And then there is linkage between um, the uh, Elbus and those security stores. So now uh, on the Elbus API, um, you uh, reference certificate IDs that are being stored in Barbican. On the Barbican side, you will store the public key, the private key, and if needed, the intermediate CAs. Um, so those two things allows us to, one, have an IP with different TCP ports and do TCP termination, also with virtual hosting. Uh, we already see a lot of community drivers. So what's nice about this cycle is that this was part of uh, spinning out the advanced services as its own project. Uh, the end result is that I believe that we are seeing a much faster pace of delivery. Um, if you look already on the Git um, of open uh, stack kilo or uh, on reviews, you would see a lot of uh, contributed uh, community drivers by different vendors. Um, and um, so that's, that's very uh, encouraging. Um, and the last thing that I would like to do is um, we've actually asked for uh, vendors to send us demos. We got three for the moment, but I'm sure that there is much more than that. Um, so we'll be showing um, the next five minutes demos for Elbas V2 from three vendors, and then uh, we'll show the Octavia one, which is uh, the open source uh, uh, demo. Okay. The nice thing about those demos is that what they uh, show is a consistent way um, that the same service is being delivered. Um, you would see exactly the same type of commands, basically creating the load balancer object. After that, you're going to see a listener being created, one or two. After that, you're going to see a pool being created attached to the listener and uh, members. And obviously, uh, some of the demos will also show traffic. Um, the nice thing about this, though, is that you get a very consistent, again, set of APIs without disregard, with disregard to what's the backend. So again, this is the A10 one, as we can see. And we can see that uh, the solution is that the model, the configuration was deployed on the appliance. OK. The next demo will show, again, a, a two-leg topology. When the VIPS is on one network, the uh, reels on this other network. You can see the virtual machine in there. Um, again, almost the same type of CLI commands. Um, first, the load balancing is being created. Then a listener is being created. You can see it's an HTTP listener. And then again, the pool are being created. Members are being attached. Now we're going to create a second listener behind the load balancer, which is the HTTPS, again, under the same IP. 
Um, as you can see, there is a reference, a TLS reference ID in there. I, um, there's a default TLS, which is the ID, which is the Bobby Khan certificate, and um, members and uh, pools, pools and members, sorry. And the end result is that um, you can see that the status of the load balancer is active, as, as discussed as the status object. And based on that, we can now go and check an HTTP-based traffic. We can see that it goes to port 80. And we can see that it's round robbing being to switch between those uh, machines. And then, obviously, we're going to see an HTTPS-based based traffic. So what we can see here is that we'll do use HTTP, but the uh, server is actually listening on port 80, which is HTTP. Um, so this is HTTPS based, right? Okay. And the last demo. Come on. Yes. Okay. Okay. So again, the same type of commands um, using a script that will just do all of this in this in the one time. You're going to see. A load balancer, a listener, pool servers. So, and obviously, we expect to see that from uh, all other implementations. So, we're going to see that the, the application is being load balanced behind HTTP. And we're going to see second iteration where it's being load balanced behind an HTTPS terminated. Okay, so we can see that it's behind now in HTTPS, being terminated for on port 80. And again, what we get is we get a unified API um, that can express uh, the uh, more modern uh, uh, capabilities of load balancers um, implemented by different flavors, and we'll be talking now on what's expected in Liberty. Brandon Logan. Mm -hmm. No, you're fine. Go. Okay. Anyway, I'm Brandon Logan from Rackspace. Um, so there's some features we're planning on for Liberty. Uh, the first one is L7 content switching. This is actually planned for Kilo, but uh, due to the server split and getting TLS in, it didn't make it. Um, but it's it's pretty close to being uh, merged into upstream right now. Um, so L7 basically uh, allows a user to direct traffic to a different pool uh, based on uh, L7 rules. And in this case, you know, be, it, one example here is uh, the URL. So you can go to a different uh, pool based on uh, what the URL a, a client sends in. Another case is uh, using uh, HTTP headers. Um, but people want to do this to, you know, have a, a performance pool versus a, a other pool that is less performant. Um, and that's going to be off the uh, listener. So we need, this basically gives a listener multiple pools. Uh, another thing that goes with L7 is uh, pool sharing. Um, so currently, um, you have to create a pool, a pool cannot be living on, it can't, it can't live on uh, two separate listeners. And so in the case of where you want to uh, load balance on port 80 and on uh, terminated 443, you would have to create a du duplicate pool 
which means you have to create duplicate members or duplicate health and health monitor. So if you ever have to update the pool or the health monitor or the member, you would have to do it twice. And this becomes kind of a, not very a, a good user experience. So with a pool sharing, you can attach a pool to uh, many different lis uh, listeners. So whenever you are able to create, or whenever you need to update a pool or add a member or delete a member, it uh, trickles to all the other listeners. So uh, it makes it easier on the, on the user. Um, next one. So if you looked at the demos, there was a lot of uh, create requests for each uh, entity. So at a minimum, to get an actual fully functioning load balancer, you have to have four API requests. One for the load balancer, one for listener, one for pool, one for member. Now, if you wanted to have many listeners and many uh, pool members, you would have a lot more API requests. Um, so one of the things we want to do is have the ability to provide the entire load balancer configuration all in one request. Um, this makes it super, uh, it, it provides the entire configuration to the driver up front so they know exactly what kind of networking they need to set up first. They know what kind of resources they, they need to set aside up, uh, up front. And in the case of Horizon, it makes it easier to just send the one command instead of having to send all these different commands. And speaking of Horizon, uh, right now uh, we don't have Horizon uh, integration, but uh, that's what we plan on for Liberty. Uh, we also plan on the, the flavor framework, and this essentially gives you an extended uh, feature set for, like if some, some drivers support certain features that the uh, uh, core API doesn't support, then this gives us this. If, for example, you can have software versus hardware flavors, or uh, HA versus non-HA flavors. Uh, we also plan on coordinate with heat integration. Um, and we plan on having Octavia replace the current namespace driver as a reference implementation. And more about Octavia, Michael. Hello. Uh, I'm Michael Johnson from HP. And as you saw before on the previous slides, we have a number of drivers from different vendors. And one of those drivers was the HA reference implementation that's uh, currently shipping with LBAS v1 and v2. Um, Octavia is yet another driver um, that's intended to replace that reference HA proxy driver with a more um, operator uh, class um, reference implementation based on an open source load balancing solution. So as you can see here, um, Octavia is based around a controller which can live on your compute nodes. And it can live on a separate node or it can live on any of your um, service nodes. And on the left under Neutron, you'll see it's just a, a driver plugin, um, much like the others. Let's see, does the mouse work here? No. Um, <laughs> but essentially, we have a, a database that stores all of our information about the, the configuration um, for the controller. And one of the nice things about Octavia is it's driver-based. So as you'll see here, we have an Infora driver. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. A uh, compute driver and a networking driver. These are all um, replaceable components in Octavia. So if you have custom solutions for this, um, you can drop in replacements. And in fact, um, even today, we have two different Infora drivers available. We have one that's based on an SSH model and one that's based around a REST API model for our Infora. Um, speaking of Amphora, Amphora is um, in the current implementation a service VM, uh, but we're calling it Amphora. We gave it a name that's abstracted because we also want to support containers and, and technologies like Docker as a, a possibility for hosting your uh, Amphora content. So the HA proxy in this uh, implementation actually lives inside that Amphora. And the controller interacts with it again through the driver. And as I mentioned, we have an SSH and a, a, a REST API driver. So uh, when the customer comes in and makes the request, we will either pull from a spares pool of M4 that are already built and uh, issue those and configure them on the fly. Or if you have a zero spares pool, um, we'll boot one up uh, using uh, whatever compute technology you have plugged in as your driver. In addition, the controller is also responsible for two other um, capabilities here, uh, the health manager and the housekeeping manager. 
These are actually separate processes, so they can be distributed uh, as you see fit. Um, the health manager, of course, monitors the amphora, makes sure they're healthy and does failover activities should there be a problem. And housekeeping is there to manage your spares pool, um, do deletions, cleanups, et cetera, that we want to do asynchronous to um, customer interaction. Uh, the other neat thing about Amphora is we're plugging them into tenant networks. So we have a load balancer network, which is kind of our management uh, network for talking to the Amphora. But then as we um, spin these up, we plug them into the customer network or even a uh, VIP network if you have a separate VIP network for your incoming connections. So, Quick roadmap and will is highlighted there. This will change, um, particularly throughout this week. We're going to have a lot of summit meetings to talk about um, kind of this roadmap and what we're uh, intending to get done. But our 0 0.5 release, which is what's work in progress right now, the intent is to have uh, feature parity, uh, maybe not complete performance from a control plane perspective, but a feature parity with the current reference implementation uh, using the service VMs and uh, just basic spares pool failover. So in other words, if we have a, a, a M4 that goes down, we'll rebuild it from a spare. In the 1.0 time frame, which again may land in Liberty, may not, uh, we'll go to active standby on the Amphora, so we'll have uh, two set up with VRRP, and they'll be able to fail over uh, between themselves, so a much faster failover than a spares pool failover, and uh, high availability on the control plane. So you'll have multiple controllers um, for your, your deployment. And then 2.0, which is out there, <laughs> um, we want to do active-active and horizontal scale out. So in number of Amphora, uh, making up one load balancing component. So let's see, how are we doing on time? 30 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and um, be bold here and try a live demo. Here you get better swag. <laughs> Actually, let me change the font first. That sizing didn't work very well. <laughs> For some reason, full screen on that screen's not full screen. Let me scale it down a little bit. Oh, that's still too big. All right, let's do this a little differently. You get to see what I get to see. Uh, that's why. No, oh, projector can't do it. OK. So I'll do it in a fairly small window. Sorry about that. So what this is is a, a DevStack VM running on VMware Workstation on this system. And um, I've done some basic setup. I'm going to run off a script here. I'm not that crazy. So I've got two nodes. These are my back-end um, web serving nodes. They have a very simple web server on them. Uh, you'll see it's .11 and .13. On the networks, I've set up um, three networks. We have the LB management network, which we talked about. That's how um, Octavia talks to its M4. Um, I've also created a load balancing VIP network. So this is a separate um, VIP for the incoming connections and a tenant network, which is where these two nodes live. Just to show you, I have no uh, load balancers up my sleeve. We don't have any booted up yet. Is it? Okay, so I just fired up uh, a load balancer. 
I'm going to do a quick check here and look at um, the different bridge networks that are set up in Nova. Since I'm on DevStack, I'm going to do a little hack here so that I have um, connectivity onto that VIP network. Um, so I just wanted to see which one is um, coming up here. So if we look at Nova list, now you see we have our Amphora, we have our management network plugged, and we also have our um, VIP network plugged now. So I'm going to go ahead, make sure 61, is that 61? This is the one that we need, yep, 61 is the one we need to put the IP on. All right, so now DevStack has access to that um, VIP network. So I'm going to go ahead and continue just like we did on the other demos. So this is going to create the listener on that load balancer. Next, I'm going to create the pool. And the first member. Our second member. All right, so there's 11 and 13. If we now look at our uh, load balancer, I've got the IP here. If everything worked. Okay, there's member one and member two. Yay, live demo. <laughs> <laughs> If we go back to Nova list, we can also see that now, um, after I added those members, we plugged that tenant network into that M4 as well. Um, not all deployments will have a separate VIP and tenant. Um, you know, you may lay out your network very differently. You may use floating IPs, but uh, that's an option. All right, back to the presentation. Okay. Don't need that demo. So you can try Octavia yourself on DevStack. Um, this is all committed. So you can go and um, update your local RC, add in the plugin, go pull it down. Um, the operator API is here if you want to go direct with REST. Um, otherwise, you can use the Neutron LBAS command set, just like I did. We also have a sample, uh, sample vagrant file in there in a local comp um, if you want to use those. Um, one other thing to note, in case um, you guys didn't see it, Octavia is now an OpenStack project, so that's very recent. So these URLs, they're currently stack forged. They're going to be changing very shortly. We didn't want to do it right before the summit. So, <laughs> um, The other thing to note, um, Octavia is definitely looking for more contributors, get more people involved, more companies involved. There's lots of work um, to do, so please feel free to join us on IRC. Um, we have a number of websites um, with information. You know, our main wiki page on OpenStack. Um, the Octavia.io is um, our documentation and GitHub. We also have a V Brown bag um, Thursday at 2:45. German will be um, doing a hands-on with Octavia. He'll be demonstrating the REST driver. I use the SSH driver today. And current status and design. Okay. Unfortunately, Doug was going to join us, but he's uh, under the weather, so he doesn't want to use up his voice. Um, as I mentioned, again, we have the uh, V Brown bag going on. We also have two design summit sessions. Octavia design session is uh, Wednesday at 1.50, and um, also the Neutron LBAS use cases, 9 Thursday. That would be a great time to come in if you're an operator, help us with what are your use cases, what do you want to see, what do you want us to, uh, to work on. And uh, any QA, any questions? <laughs> That's correct. In 1.0, it is a single controller um, for your Amphora. 
And then for uh, the failover, we'll be um, pulling from a spares pool, configuring up a new one and putting it in place. It's 1.0 that will get the HA and the failover. Um, it is statically connected at creation time. <laughs> Not yet. V2, uh, version 2 of um, Octavia is still pretty op up in the air. So that may be a um, statically sized horizontal scale implementation. I don't know yet. That's <laughs> way out on the horizon for us at this point. I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear the question. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, my first question is that uh, it seems Octavia is a really a separate project rather than a driver than Neutron. Uh, it well, has. There's a driver that talks about yeah. Octavia yeah. Uh, appliance, basically. Uh, so there's a Neutron driver that basically makes request REST calls to Octavia itself. And so that's the driver. Octavia is just a, like any other backend. Yeah, the Octavia driver plugs into the Neutron networking services framework. It's on the okay. far side of the diagram at the bottom. And it uses a messaging queue to interact with the controllers. Okay, and does the Octavia need to boot a source VM to uh, to set up the load balance service yet? Uh, so, um, uh, what software uh, installed in the source VM? Right uh, now, it's HA proxy. Uh, yeah. HA proxy. Yeah, but that's going to be configurable yeah. because of the M4 driver. Uh, okay. Or Do you have any it. other uh, free software choice like uh, uh, RVS or something something else? Yeah. I mean, I, there's certainly the opportunity for other drivers to be underneath this controller. Um, even hardware components could implement an M4 driver um, and, a, and a networking driver and a compute driver to put a hardware implementation underneath it. Um, there's certainly opportunity for other configurations. Okay. Uh, well, this seems interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Over here. That's a good question. Um, probably Brand's a better person What's to answer that. Are we going to have a bulk API for creating large numbers? Uh, like a batch up or a batch create type like of thing? I think that would go into uh, like updating a pool and be able to specify a lot of members. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely something that uh, we thought about. It's just we haven't listed it, but yeah. That goes along with this. I'll get it close <laughs> across streams. Yeah, um, really. So yeah, that goes along with the single, uh, like the create call I mentioned. Yeah, but yeah, that goes along with updates too. Updates, you kind of want to update the entire uh, graph or the tree at the same time. Good question. Uh, we were at that presentation as well. <laughs> so uh, the question was, how do service chaining and load balancing work together? Um, we're still coming up to speed on the service chain. There's, and, and there's actually understand. work. Uh, the, the service chain discussion that was done here before is kind of very forward looking. There were uh, yeah. more down to earth discussion on how you can actually chain uh, uh, logical services in Neutron. Um, I'm, I, I, I recall that there were discussions in previous summits. I'm not sure what's the status of that. but. There are discussions on um, service chain in terms of firewall, VPN, load balancer, or any other virtual service, and how you can actually cascade them 
per tenant. At the moment, um, there is no such thing. We have no good answer. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yet. Okay. I just wanted to ask a question about the load balance HA. Uh, the, I, I just want to know the, the community approach for this load balance HA. Is there any uh, plan or, uh, or uh, some, something uh, planned to do for, for this topic? Load balance HA? Load balance, load balance HA. I noticed that there, there, there was a blueprint, blueprint in the community, but there is no big progress for that. Uh, uh, you know, in, in, Neutron, uh, uh, in Neutron, it has the internal HA support for L3 agent, for L3 layer. Yeah, I just want to know, is there any plan for the HA support for the load balance? Yes. So the answer is yes. So, um, I mean, if you, the current reference implementation is running on the, on the network service and is not part of the HA, uh, HA work that is being done, and the switch to uh, Octavia mm -hmm. will actually enable a load balancing um, for us to be highly available. So. And of course, if you're using a hardware driver, you can use the hardware implementation of HA um, to achieve a similar. So there, there will be no uh, code or, or, or a blueprint plan for this one, for, 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 for the HA topic. It will just adopt the hardware support for, for the HA support? No. So again, um, for, uh, the current um, for implementation is based on HA proxy. Mm -hmm. uh, the plan for uh, Octavia is to provision HA proxy instances that are highly available. Um, this is not there at the moment. It will be in version one, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. I think we're out of time. Thank you.